Bobby. We the undead calling you, Bobby Slater. Ha, 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 ha. There are witches here waiting for you, Bobby Slater. <laughs> I thought we did that pretty well. Yeah, it might teach a little wimp a lesson. Come on, I'm hungry. Yeah, all right. I am her Katie! <laughs> Wake you up! Come back! Come back! Ouch! Please come back! In Dublin, fair city, where the girls are so pretty, I first set my eyes Antigone. on Molly. Antigone! Might be in the bathroom, though. Up to. Oh, we're fooling around at the cemetery. Scared the wits out of Bobby Slater. Yeah. What was he doing then? Oh, he made some off remarks about us Baileys. So we did in the camp. You didn't hurt him. Mum. Only his pride. Where's Hector? Not in the bathroom. No. We'd have heard. He's got to be dragged there. Hmm. Yeah. Got to be here somewhere. What's Dad working on today? Electronic mouse catcher, isn't it, Mum? Yeah, I think so. All right. Dinner's ready. Is Bunyip coming? Of course he is. Right, let's go then. Mouse catcher. Hmm. The real thing will be bigger than that, won't it? Oh, yeah, of course. This is just a prototype. But think, Michael, what a boon it'll Heracles. be. Heracles. Heracles. Think what a boon it'll be to the farmers. After the plagues of the last few years, they've tried everything to get rid of them, you know? Absolutely everything. Do you think it'll really work? Well, of course it'll work. Mice aren't that intelligent, you know. They've learned remarkably little from their long association with men. You see, the mouse enters the trap here, feeding chamber, into here, which will be filled with delectables. It squeals of joy. <laughs> will attract other mice, which will, in turn, go down the tube into the feeding chamber. An electronic sensor will drop the washing rack and sound off the alarm, alerting the farmer. Oh. Then what? Well, um, he disposes of them. You mean... Yes. How? Um, uh, that's up to him. I prefer not to dwell on that side of things. Well, it sounds all right in theory. Yes. A few wrinkles to iron out first. Great. Our dinner's ready. One wants to know how long you were. Is it that time already? Um, tell her to start without me, would you, Mike? Just a few tricky bits here. It won't be a minute. Rather. You said to start without him. Yeah, right. 
Can everybody move up a bit, please? No, oh, push it up. Just take this bundle. A bit more. Oh. Big as he. <laughs> Pretty big. They usually are. What did you find him, eh? Hey? At the cemetery. I think he's been thumbing around for a while, though. Checking out the scene. Mm. Hey. Good evening, everyone. Sorry, mate. Oh, hi, Dad. Sorry, I'm not going to be in the fridge just for a minute. Careful, it's hot. Oh, there, Dad! Hey! He's nearly shot on his slap. Slap? And does one have slap? Oh, it's a bunny, is it? Oh, sorry, old chap. That's all right. Oh, this. So, we've got a bunny in the family. What's his name? Bunny. Huh? We can't just call him Bunny. We should have a great name. Bunny up sounds great. Well, neither am I, but I've got a great name. Mm. But at least something dignified. His name's Bunny. <laughs> Everybody ready? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Once, in a distant country, we'll call it Arcadia, there lived a peasant family. They had um, three children, but somehow it wasn't enough. So Artemis, the goddess in charge of such things, found three more who happened at the time to have no homes of their own. Ah, a most agreeable situation all round. She was one smart goddess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Though their house was um, old and ramshackle, their material possessions few, they were, for the most part, pretty happy. The situation their neighbours found quaint, even downright antisocial. I mean, how can you be happy without TV and a shag pile carpet? Easy, because the family, a bunch of nuts, believed that in the long run, the gods were on their side. And that uh, something would turn up, or someone. And so it was, on the night of our story. Picked up. Lim, this one was very odd someone. Very odd indeed. My bunny up. However, because the family always shapes and colours, everyone was made welcome. Good night, Cass. Good night. Good night, Mum. Good night, Cass. You forgot someone. Oh, so I did. Good night, Bunny. Good night, Mum. Good night, love. What's up, Heck? My bunion. He's too big. He won't fit through. Won't he? He'll fit all right. He just doesn't want to sleep in a loft. Why doesn't he? Because when you have to sleep in swamps, man, otherwise the scales fall off. Well, interesting. I didn't know that. My bunny hasn't got any scales. See? He's been out of swamp too long. OK, you can go back to the swamp. It's in the morning. Mum? Yes, love? Can you let my bunny a bit before you go to bed? Right. <coughs> Hi, Jack. Hello there, young actor. Not to school, are we? Not yet. Gotta find my bunny up first. Ah, oh, yeah, of course. They'll be down at the billabong. That's right, they sleep in the billabongs and the swamps and the rivers, don't they? How did you know? Oh, just something I picked up. You going to school with you, is he? Put our team for show and tell. Oh, good idea. See you later. Morning, Jack. Kids, eh? Ah, hmm? oh, yeah. How are things? Oh, flat out. Turn out Mrs. Egan's place. She's selling out. Ernie Slater. Yeah, he wants our place too. I told him to go jump. <laughs> right. Yeah, I got all the stuff out of a shed. I thought you might be able to use some of it. Oh, thanks a lot, Jack. I can use just about anything in my line of work. <laughs> Hello.
Hello, Pandora. Hello, Gilbert. I'd uh, offer you a lift, but uh, it's against regulations. Oh, that's all right. I have to stay with Hector anyway. Of course. Oh, well, someone could be uh, committing a crime or uh, parking illegally even, so I'd better be off. Well, uh, see you soon, Pandora. See you soon, Gilbert. I've been to the Shire offices, Mr. Slater. Is this what you're looking for? Oh, yes, thank you, Miss Clum. <laughs> My goodness, look at the size of it. Amazing the number of people who refuse to accept their civic responsibilities. Yes, Mr. Slater. Who are content to, to live in debt to the community. Will that be all? Uh, for the moment, thank you, Miss Clum. Anders, Archer, Bailey, Bailey, Mr. George Bailey. <laughs> what a surprise. I don't suppose there's somewhere private we can talk, Mr. Bailey? I suppose correctly, Mr. Slater. No. It's about the children. No, no. It's a different matter entirely. It's about... Uh, why don't you sit down? Oh, Mrs. Bailey. Mr. Slater. Uh, do you smoke, Mr. Slater? Uh, no, I don't. Neither do I. Gave it up years ago. Nice to have it around, eh? It's about your rates, Mr. Bailey. Oh, quite reasonable, I assure you. No, what was that man? Your council rates. Oh, I'm sorry. You were saying about the uh, the rates, Mr. Slater. What are rates, Daddy? Money for the council, Mike. I'm Hector. What for? Well, for parks and roads and libraries, things like that. The trouble is, Mr. Bailey, that not everyone pays. Some people neglect to do so for years on end. Really? For you, yourself, come under that category. Really? You haven't paid for three years. Oof. An oversight. Uh, we'll pay, naturally. Good. The sum is $4,502.41. That including interest. Not much. Of course, you do have a whole month in which to pay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's out of the question. We haven't got that sort of money. I realised that it might be hard for you, such a large family. That's why I came in person instead of letting it go through the usual channels. You see, I bring good news as well as bad. The perfect solution for all concerned. What might that be? I have a buyer, Mr. Bailey. We're not selling one, Bolano. I think this is the fifth time I've told you, Mr. Mm -hmm. Slater. Mr. Bailey, if you can't pay your rates, you will have to sell. I'm merely trying to help. You're in real estate, Mr. Slater. Perhaps you're merely trying to earn yourself a big commission. Oh, dear you. I don't have to listen to this. One month, that's all you've got. And no one to blame but yourselves. We can't move. What would happen to my bunyip? I don't give a fig for your blasted bunyip. And that's another thing. A child like that in these surroundings shouldn't be allowed. What's wrong with these surroundings? Everything. He should be in a home somewhere, a hospital, where they know how to care for handicapped children. Who's handicapped? What's it mean? Handicapped. Ernest Slater here. Miss Tremble? Yes, Mr. Slater, I presume. Oh, delighted, we should delight. I do regret the necessity to interrupt your weekend, but when the happiness of a child is at stake, his moral and physical welfare... Why, this is the uh, child, I presume. Oh, dear me, no. Uh, my son, Robert. You won't believe the things I've got to tell you, miss. No, probably not. 
I'll ascertain the facts at first hand, if you don't mind. Social workers in town. Glad there's come rushes to come in here. Action station! She'll think we're all crazy. She'll probably frighten Bunyip anyway. Can I help you? Oh, I'm Mr. Burley, I presume. Yes? Yeah. Um, it's uh, Maud de Tremble, Child oh. Welfare Department. Of course, of course. Uh, do please come in. What an unexpected pleasure. Mm. Uh, we have a visitor from the department. How nice. Miss Tremble. <laughs> Tremble, T-R-E-M-B-A-L-L. Uh, um, may I introduce my wife, Irene? How do you do? How do you do? My daughter, Cassandra. Pandora, how do you do? Uh, my son, Hector. Heracles, nice to meet you. Um... Pandora. Cassandra, Miss Tremble. Um, Heracles? It's Glenn. Michael. How do you do? And who are you, really? Michael. You got me right, man. Tonight? <laughs> and last but not least, Heracles. You didn't get me right. Oh, I'm sorry, son. Sorry, Miss Hargraves. Hector. <laughs> Rather unorthodox sleeping arrangements. But clean and comfortable. Why can't I bunny come inside too? He loves God. They're his favourite. No hot water system. The old wood chip heater does this very well. No television. We read a lot. Aloud. Together, that is. Who wants uh, boring on television anyway? I just want my bunya. As soon as she's gone, Hick. Special children have special needs, Mr. Burley. And the uh, situation here is far from an ideal. I'm particularly concerned about little Hector, wasn't it? Yes. Crying all the time. <laughs> I wonder, can we have a little chat in private? Oh, yes, by all means. Hector? Why don't you show Miss Tremble the garden, hmm? Turn hmm. along. That's a good boy. Dad's a good boy, mean old. That's enough, Cassandra. Well, I don't like her. Nor do I. What right has she got to go poking around? Every right in the world, I'm afraid. I'm here to help you, see, so... You must be afraid to tell me everything. Now, why all these tears, hmm? They made me put my bunyip outside. Really? And he loves guns. Oh, yes, they do, don't they? Teddies and things. He's not a teddy or a thing. No, but uh, like a teddy. No, he's not a bit like that. No, what I mean is you uh, take him to bed with you, don't you? I can't. Can't you? Why not? I wanted to, but I used to sleep in the billabong. In the water? The poor cuddly little... Wow, well, I would have understood a little more understanding than that. I really would. First your father can't remember your name. He never remembers names. And now this. Can they be so insensitive, I wonder? Don't you worry. You uh, have a jelly bean instead. And don't forget to clean your teeth, will you? And do stop sniffing. Everything's going to be all right. Everything's going to be fine. Well, I was never one to beat about the bush, so I'll be perfectly frank. Our, uh, our control over your own children is, of course, uh, limited. With the younger ones who are fostered. 
it's different. Uh, Michael and Lim seem to be coping, but uh, Hector is quite another matter. The sleeping arrangements are totally inadequate. The house is, to say the least, antiquated. And the environment, I'm afraid, is totally unsuitable for a handicapped child. But Miss Rumble, we... Tremble. Uh, the, yes, please. I... I'm afraid there's more. My information is that you're about to lose this property altogether. Now, what do you propose to do about that? You can hardly live in a tent. Oh, we could if we had to, Miss Tremble. The department would never allow it. No, unless you can better your position a larger house. What, uh, what exactly is it that you do, Mr. Burley? Well, there's the farm, you see. Uh, that appears somewhat neglected. Not my strong suit, I admit. I'm a, an inventor by inclination. How interesting. Of what? Um, well... Gadgets. <laughs> Such as? I'm working on an electronic mousetrap at the moment. And a homing device for socks. I hardly think that socks or uh, mouse traps. Anyway, be that as it may, uh, the question of Hector still remains. And I must say, I find your treatment of him callous in the extreme. Callous? Yes, and totally unreasonable. Why shouldn't the child have his little bunyip? <laughs> it's not a little bunyip. It happens to be a very large bunyip. Oh. Oh! <laughs> And I suppose it uh, breathes fire, does it, and devours maidens. <clears throat> no, I, I think you're confusing bunyips with dragons. Miss Tremble, you may have noticed the sign on our gate, Wombolano. Yes, I may have. What of it? It's an Aboriginal word, meaning love. And that's what Hector gets in this house. Hector and all the kids. <laughs> well, unfortunately, Mrs. Bailey, love is not enough. Children need discipline, guidance, and... A firm hand. No, I'm very much afraid that we shall be removing Hector just as soon as he can be placed in a more appropriate situation. Please, <coughs> Harry. I'm sorry. The decision is made. She's crazy, that prem woman. They can't do it. They can, if we let them. I won't go, I won't. Then we've got to stop them. She said everything would be all right. And go me a jelly bean. Now. Shush, we'll work something out. Stop crying a minute and listen. I've got an idea. Hey, man. You wouldn't be thinking of a certain place. With a certain long tunnel. A cave? I don't know if it'll work. Come on, let's get Pandora on side. Yeah. Oh, yeah, not really. You were. Oh, does he good sometimes? Look, about Hector. Oh, I can't bear to think oh. about it, Ben. He's so little. And he's been so happy here. He's blossomed. I'm not even sure he understands it's not our doing. That we don't want him to go. He understands. You think so? I know so. And I wouldn't worry too much, Mum. Something's bound to turn up. <laughs> Just like your father. And why not? The first Pandora was left with hope, remember? Good morning, Mrs. Slater, sir. Can I help you? It's a rather delicate matter. The situation is that Hector, one of the Bailey's foster children, is to be removed today. Removed? Now, since the Bailey's could prove difficult, I feel that you should be present. Well. It's hardly my job, Mr. Slater. I'll, uh, I'll have to check it out with my sergeant in Shady Gully. Check it out with the chief commissioner, if you like. Uh, anyone except the Baileys. Uh, the less they know beforehand, the better. Do come in. Uh, Miss Harvey to see us. Tremble. Yes. Right, I'll come straight to the point, Mrs. Bailey. A place has been found for Hector in an excellent children's home. I see. So soon. Well, it was uh, felt that uh, any delay would only... Uh... <clears throat> I'm sure you know what's best. <sighs> I, I 
expect him to do. I must say, you don't seem unduly upset. Well, you did warn us, Miss Trimble. One must accept the inevitable, don't you agree? Oh, I knew that all. Very sensible attitude. Yes, well, we haven't much time. Uh, if, uh, if you could pack Hector's things. Of course. Oh, uh, there is just one slight problem. Oh, yes, and what might that be? He isn't here. What do you mean, he isn't here? He's gone. Gone? Where? The Bunyip took him. <laughs> it's a joke. No, it isn't. Now, listen. If I hear one more word about Bunyip's... They were very close. It's possible that the Bunyip, unable to face being... Parted from Hector, seem Don't make up stories, dear. Oh, it's outrageous. You're hiding the boy, that's all. If you don't produce the child, the penalties Look, can be very severe. I assure you, Miss Tremble, I have no idea at all where Hector is. I will grant that the child could be upset. I will grant that he could have run away. But all these fairy tales about bunyips must cease. The child must be produced. Immediately. If we only knew where to start. Oh, I've had enough of this. Constable, the child's either lost or been abducted. Either way, it's a police matter. Carry on. I was about to suggest I did, Mr. Slater. Mrs. Bailey, Mr. Bailey. Now, I know Hector, of course, but the, uh, the Bunyip. Now, would this be the same Bunyip who accompanied us <laughs> to the uh, Jalura Cinema on the night of the 20th of March last? Hi. Hi. Change your shift already? Yeah, my turn. Um, how's it going? All right. It's boring. Better than going off with more tremble. Yeah, what did you bring? Got some books. I meant to eat. I'm starving. So is Banya. Bananas, peaches, cherries, nuts, muesli, fresh milk. And scones for bunya. Yum. Hey, and guess what? He's becoming famous. Who? Hey. Bunya. Here, take a look at this. Now, uh, a six-year-old boy missing since yesterday has, according to his foster family, been hidden by a devoted bunya to prevent his removal to an institution. Good old Bunyip. <laughs> well, surely the other children must know where he is then. Where are the other children? They've disappeared too, have they? Oh, no, they're around somewhere. Outside, I think. Yes, probably. They could be playing cricket. Well, really, I, th I find your attitude quite extraordinary. Well, a child is missing, and nobody seems in the least bit concerned. Not even the police. I mean, nobody is making the slightest attempt to find him. Well, I will, Mr. Bailey. You have no doubt about that. And when I do, you will be charged with neglect. And doubtless, you'll lose all the children. Neglect? Forget it, Lynn. She was just trying to frighten us. Wasn't she, Dad? Come on, Constable, what are you waiting for? With or without your help, Hector will be found. We would like to see the swamp where the alleged Bunyip allegedly lives. By all means. Uh, Michael? Yeah, I'll show them. Michael's our Bunyip specialist. Yes, well, I suppose, being Aborigine... He did a project on them at school. 58 pages. <laughs> yes, well, just show me where it is, sir. Constable Good. Camping around and asking stupid questions? 
Why do they do something? I'm afraid the police force has gone to the dogs. And no wonder when you consider the type of person they're recruiting nowadays. That constable good. Oh, no, sir. Of course, sir. The pay isn't up to much. <clears throat> I think, Mr. Slater, it's time we took matters into our own hands. Now, the clue to it all lies with those children. They must be watched, Mr. Slater. They must be watched, both day and night. It's getting late. Oh, it won't be long. What is it? It's a sort of an exercise gadget. For Hector. Certainly. Strengthen his legs. Thought he might need something, you know, where he is. If he can't get about too much. Seems the bunyip's got problems too. I've been asked to develop a, a tail curler. <laughs> I didn't know he had a tail. Yes. However, I'm not quite sure. Uh, oh, well. No. George. Hmm? Look, should we ask the kids to bring him back home? I mean, I keep thinking he's only six and... Yes, I know, I keep thinking too, but I had a long chat with Pan and she assures me that everything's okay, so... Yeah, I talked to Heracles and... We can trust him, love. Let's give it a day or two. You're still waiting for a miracle, aren't you? Yes. <sighs> I miss everything stuck in here. I was a bit upset last night. I took my... This won't go on forever, you know. Oh, mortal give it up sooner or later. Something will turn up, Heck. Don't you worry. Look at this. Police admit lack of progress. Bunyip one, police nil. <laughs> <laughs> Two take one. Well, no doubt you're missing Hector, Mrs Bailey. Great deal. Do you have fears for his safety? I know he's in good hands. Well, the bunny pony took him away because he was going to be sent to an institution. To which Hector did not want to go. No, he didn't. He's been with us for four years. And as far as Hector's concerned, this is his home. We're his family. Thanks, Mrs Bailey. Well, let's hope there's a happy outcome to this most unusual case. And Hector, if you and your uh, friend are watching, keep smiling. Terry Willisie, reporting from Bill and Bang. for the place where the bunyip is, mate. Well, there's no such thing. Can we get souvenirs? That bunyip. Yes, yes, of course. I'll, I'll be glad to show you. Ah, thank you. Don't want to cause any trouble, mate. No trouble, none at all. But why not come have some lunch first, oh, eh? Well, we, A good idea? Uh, well, we do an excellent counter lunch, you know. Uh, 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 see, they're starving. Well, they always are. Are you implying that you could get Hector back if you felt it was safe? I'm saying that the bunyip would bring Hector back if he felt it was safe. So in a sense you're saying the ball is in the department's court and you're hoping for a change of heart there? Hoping, yes. Thank you, George Bailey. This is Cassie Lee reporting in Billambang. The point is, George, may I call it, George? This thing is big and it's going to get bigger. What we need here is organisation. Bus tours daily. Bunyip souvenirs. Now look, I'll take on the lot and cut you in for 50%. What do you say? Well, what I want to say... As Shire President, I can persuade the Council to waive your outstanding rates. Well, in view of the great benefits that you and your children have brought to this town. Now, is that a deal? Or is that a deal? It's a deal, Mr. Slater, for one reason only. Might just help us to keep Hector. You won't regret this, George. <laughs> Partner, you certainly won't regret this. <laughs> Good 
afternoon. Welcome to Billamang. May I assist you, madam? <laughs> I'm shocked. I'm shocked, Mr. Slater, that a man like you could put profit before that poor, poor child. Nobody but myself seems to have thought of hacked her at all. Nobody seems to care about him in the least. But I shall not give up, Mr. Slater. I shall continue this fight alone. You ill-mannered donkey. Excuse me, man. I mean, Miss Tremble. Yes, yes, what is it? I want a word with you, if it's OK. Yes, all right, go on. What you said just now, that's not true. We all care. Well, except Slater. We care very much. Hector's our brother. No, nah, he's not really a brother. He's our brother, Miss Tremble, and we do want what's best for him, but that is an institution. I know. I've been in one. No, you don't understand. Oh. Oh, if only people had see reason. <laughs> It's nice and cosy. He's got his own bed and he's had scones nearly every day. He doesn't like it. You can tell by his tail. It's gone really straight. Well, it has a bit, I must admit. But Dad's working on the curler. It's nearly finished. When their tails do that, it means they're unhappy. He might be getting sick. Perhaps I should have a word to him. Listen, I know you're missing the river and all your other friends. If you really have to go, then we'll understand. The trouble is that if you leave, then so will Hector, because you're the one who gives him the courage to stay hiding. But if Hector goes back home now, he'll be sent away. None of us could bear that. It'd just about break Mum's heart. So we're all trying very hard to stop it happening. We might succeed too, if you could both go on being very brave and patient for just a little bit longer. What do you think? He says, all right, he'll stay, but only for a little while. Good. So in spite of all the resources that are available to you, you've made no real progress? Well, not a great deal. None, in fact? No. So what will you concentrate on now, the boy or the bunyip? Well, both, of course. Uh, I mean, anything that might help. You mean... The police are now out looking for a bunyip, Sergeant Dick. I didn't say that, Inspector. You know what, journalist... Yes, Inspector, but I was misquoted. Right here, Miss Glum. It says that the cops believe in bunyips. <laughs> Nothing has stopped the tourist invasion now. They'll be here in droves. So, get on to the architect and tell him I like the plans for the hotel extension. I'll attend to it, Mr. Slater. Seven National News with Terry Willisey. Overnight, bunyip mania has turned the sleepy little town of Billambang into a major tourist attraction. But the tourist influx has created problems for Billambang. But these are minor inconveniences and do little to dampen the enthusiasm of the crowds. Already, the developers are moving in with Slater Holdings announcing plans for a $4 million hotel complex and a Bunyip Land Fun Park, which will eventually rival Disneyland. There are skeptics, of course, who insist that Bunyips don't exist. But try telling that to these people. Let me just say this. All this excitement, all this industry, all this development uh, has been brought about by the youth of Billamang. Open down, isn't it? Oh, yes, darling. Go and change your clothes. Come on. I hope it pelts down all night. We might get a break from the bunyip hunters. I hope Hector and Heracles aren't getting wet. I'm sure they're not, Mum. Bunyips hate rain. I know someone is going to get soaked to the skin if this keeps up. Mm. Who is it? It's Pandora. It's Pandora. We thought you might like to come in for a while, out of the rain. Come on. Well, we're going to have a story.
story tonight. Can we? I don't think... Um... Oh, is this the uh, reading aloud you were telling me about? No, no, this is a little different. We actually tell stories. Well, a story. Let's, Dad. All right. Your suggestion, so you start. Once upon a time, there was a place called Acadia. The Acadians who include the Bailos family. They were a pretty happy lot, but there was a one loving thing who wants to spoil things for everyone. His name was, um... Sisyphus. This Sisyphus fellow felt that Acadia should all belong to him, especially that bit owned by the family. He could see a way to get it too. But one of the children had a pet centaur. So Sisyphus decided to get at the family by getting rid of this kid and his pet. He was really a creep. So he sent away to... To Boeotia. The Boeotians were a sort of bureaucrat class who made all the rules and regulations. And the rules said, no child shall have a pet centaur and no child shall have love. So they sent an inspector to take the child away. There's one more. Uh, I'm not very good at um... Everyone has to play. Try! Mm. Well, it seems to have stopped raining, so I'll... Uh... No, don't bother, please. I'll just get my coat. I'll see myself out. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. We almost got her. Almost. the bunny up's tail curler. I can't concentrate on all this racket going on. If we could only persuade more tremble. Uh, Mr. Bailey. Anton Felix. Mr. Felix, uh, my wife Irene. Delighted, Mrs. Bailey. Are you from the department, Mr. Felix? Department? Oh, good heavens, no. Departments are not my thing at all. The mere word. No, I'm an art collector. I've been trying to get up here for days, ever since I saw your wonderful sculptures on television, Mr. Bailey. Still here. Such a relief. <laughs> I was terrified they might have all been snapped up already. Ah, amazing sense of form and structural integrity. Such vision. Tell me, Mr. Bailey, do you have an agent? Uh, no. Of course, I've been meaning to, but... Wonderful. I... I have a feeling that today we'll see the start of the most rewarding relationship. Ah, now this particular work, intriguing. I call it uh, Mouse Catcher. After all, most of us are mice and, well, it symbolizes... I know, I know. The eternal struggle of the common man against the mindless oppression of the machine. Am I right? Absolutely. Just leave everything to me, George. We'll hold the exhibition in Sydney as soon as it can be arranged. Oh, such a thrill to discover a new artist. Goodbye now. I'll be in touch. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Where we're going, we could end up rich. I don't want to be rich. I just want... I know. I'm going to talk to that Harrison woman. Tremble. Have you found another family for Hector? Oh. Mr. Bailey, um... No, not as yet. But, um... but you're still going to take him away? Not to a better home or to people who will show him more affection, but to an institution. Mr. Bailey. Yes? I may have been a bit uh, hasty. I have to admit that from what I've seen, yours is a loving family. The children seem secure. They're well behaved. They're totally untouched by all this publicity. Then can't something be done? No, I'm afraid not. Why not? Because the paperwork has all been done. Paperwork? Yeah, yes, it's the system. I'm system? Sorry, I'm afraid that's the way it works. Then it's high time it was made to work differently. 
to go home, Harry. He's had enough. We need Mum. What's up, mate? My bunny, he won't stay here anymore. And I won't stay without him. I won't. I want to go home. There he is. There's a little fella. Now we're going to lose him. Oh, no, we're not. Excuse me, could I speak to you? <laughs> we can't lose Hector. We've got to do something. Can you talk to the people in the news or something? Paper! One year later, it's read all about it. Paper! Hector Home, Arthur Family Reunited! Hector Home, Arthur Family Reunited! The saga of the missing boy and the uh, bunyip down under seems to have had a happy ending after all. But the folks in Billambang claim that the whole affair was harassment of the Bailey family by the child welfare authorities. Sorry, I have nothing to say. But do you agree that an injustice has been done? No comment. You have no comment on that at all? No, not whatsoever. You don't believe an injustice has been done? Well, I... possibly it has. Look, will you turn that thing off? How do you feel about this personally, Miss Tremble? I don't know. You must ask the director. But you don't take that thing away, I shall get very upset. The director was not available for comment. Well, if only the department could be persuaded to break the rules. I won't go, I won't. And if you make me, I'll run away again. It's for you, Miss Tremble. Oh, thank you, dear. Uh, excuse me. Mm. Yes, Tremble speaking. <laughs> oh, yes, director. <clears throat> Oh, yes, Director. Oh, yes. Yes, Director. Uh, yes, I will. Um, well, it, um, it seems that there might be a way out after all. Um, um, if, if you were prepared to, uh, to adopt Hector as your own son. Uh, adopt him legally? We were always told that was impossible. Oh, well, not anymore, apparently. <laughs> Um, do you think the director... Could anything. <laughs> anything, it just says so. <laughs> well, Harini, it looks like we're going to have three more Baileys. Oh, exactly what we always wanted. <laughs> then, I think I should go by myself. Two, two, six... I'll wait for you here. Day, but I know you can't, so I reckon it's time to say goodbye. You know, whenever you're around our billabong again, it'd be real great to see you. Bye, Bunyip, and thanks for being my friend. Have a place to ourselves again. Ah, oh, lovely. There is just one thing, though, George. We hmm? still haven't decided what on earth we can do to make a living. Oh, don't worry. Something will turn up. George, are ready? <laughs> I thought I'd race up and bring you the good news myself. Oh, great about Hector, by the way. Saw it all on television. Yes. Uh, what good news, Anton? The exhibition, what else? A total sellout. Wonderful, isn't it? But there it is. They're battering down the doors of my gallery. So when can I have some more, George? Uh, 
A couple next week, would that be possible? Uh, a bunyip tail curler, perhaps? Um, I think I could probably manage that, yes. Wonderful. Ah. Your check. It took some time, of course, because people don't change overnight, but um, the inspector came to realize that all her life she'd been more worried about the rules than the people they were supposed to help. <laughs> she was rather a lonely person, you see. She'd no family of her own, and, um, well, she didn't really know about people. Uh, well, she'd studied them, of course, but, um, well, she didn't know about them, especially not children. Anyway, the great goddess Athene came to her aid and um, helped her to see that she had made rather a dreadful mistake. And, I mean, Cass. And everyone was happy again. Hector? They were all happy except the inspector because she was still very lonely and the children didn't have a nut. So they adopted her. Oh, Hector. The, the end. <laughs> Most satisfactory conclusion. Good evening, Mr. Slater. Good evening. Uh, I'm sorry to intrude. That's okay. Come in, Mr. Slater. What can we do for you? I, I don't know if you realize, if you understand how much, how desperately this town needs the bunyip. And the tourists he brought with him. Are you quite, quite sure he's gone? Oh, yes. He's gone, all right. And you couldn't possibly find another one? Not many around these days. No. Well, that's it then, isn't it? Unless Hector's bunyip laid an egg before it left. They do that sometimes. <laughs>